Welcome to the Board Game Snobs Podcast. Critically harsh reviews with a touch of class. Baby, I'm back. I've been gone. <laughs> this is like, when's the last time we've recorded us? It's been like a uh, month. Just, just the two of us. It's been a long while. Well, we're not together. We're still uh, separated because no, I'm working all the time and I don't have time to come see Thanks your, a lot. your ugly Harkonnen face. <laughs> why, why, why? I'm tired of you supporting your family. Come, come support board game snobs. Ah, uh, if we get a Patreon going, I might be more inclined because they feel obligated. <laughs> well, then do it. I I'm don't sure want to our, do that. Uh, I don't want to bilk my people for money for our mediocre banter. But I do. Mm. Any mediocre. money's good money. Greed is good. Uh, that's uh, what uh, Michael Douglas said before he got uh, uh, super greedy. Super in greedy? In part two. Did you watch part two? Of what? Greed is good. Wall Street. Charlie Sheen, uh, Michael uh, Douglas. That was all. I can't. The, all I those didn't say it was run a, together. I didn't say it was a good movie. Is that the one with his suspenders? He yes. wears suspenders. Yeah, yeah. I can't handle those Wall Street shows. I watched the uh, crud. It's got Spock in it. Spock and Kevin Spacey and Leonard Nimoy. No, the new Spock, not Lemon anymore. The new Spock. Spock went to Wall Street. Yeah, it's the new Spock and uh, <laughs> the new Spock. Stan- Stanley Tucci, and it's got a bunch of famous people. He's like Jeffrey greed Irons, is illogical. Demi Moore is in it. The guy off the Mentalist. They have the Mentalist. Wait, the Mentalist is on there. Well, he's the gonna me- know what stocks are gonna do. And uh, the Marvel dude, the one that has the jewel in his head, Vision. Vision is in it. And so what wow. it is, is that they, Stanley Tucci is somehow ahead of the mentalist and vision, and he figures out the 2008 uh, subprime mortgage uh, housing bubble, and then Spock helps them to sell all their stock, and basically, basically they're all bad people. It would be more interesting if all these characters were indeed Vision and Spock helping Wall Street. I, I mean, Spock could figure out which things are which. Vision can... I mean, he could force his stock to do what he wanted it to. The OG uh, Spock, when he went back in time, he just saved a whale. He covered his ears in shame and saved a whale. Basically. I don't think his ears would have given him away in these times. They'd be like, oh, yeah, the dude's shaped his ears. Like, that's a thing. Isn't that weird that if Spock were, that they were to come back to now, Spock would just be in vogue. <laughs> he would be on tick. He would be a TikTok star Except with his ears. His- his haircut. That haircut's uh, not on fleek. No, it's not. Is that, got is that what you're saying? Cut. On fleek? It's not it slapping. Was, it was like seven years ago. Well, you I mean like, uh, You mean flapping? Flapping. It's not flapping. <laughs> Let me tell you something that irritates me. When I go to Subway and I get a sandwich. Okay, A. I also notice lots of times I'll say A as if a B is to come, and I will hardly ever say B. What's the I, option to the sandwich at Subway? A salad? Uh, your salads and pizzas. Nobody's getting pizzas nor salads at Subway. I've often gotten a salad when I've tried to like lose weight and go a, a lower cow or a, a, a keto or something. That's not. That's not. But the sandwiches is what helps you lose weight, though. That's what helps. No, you. but I'm talking about if you're going keto and hanging out with younger people. When, uh, <laughs> don't the, the name that shall not be said in Subway. Oh. When you go to Subway, okay. Anyway, you got me off track. I go to Subway. First of all, the one thing happened to me that I've yearned for ever since I watched Cheers. <laughs> I walk in. This has never happened before. The lady, I go in this place literally every morning, literally every morning. I drive my truck into their parking lot because it's nice and big. I get the same sandwich every 
morning. The lady, I walk in this time, the lady finally says, the usual? I got the usual. She knew me. I've never had someone say the usual. I got that home. I felt like I was in Mayberry all of a sudden. I got that hometown vibe. She said the usual. I said, yes, ma'am. And she made my sandwich. She knew what I wanted. Have you ever had someone say the usual to you? Well, yeah, but I mean, it's kind of also yeah. like a, sad, it's a sad experience. because when have you, Where have you been that they say the usual? I get the same thing everywhere I go. Well, tell me where. Where did someone say the usual, Jerry? I, the, the various coffee shops that I frequent, just everywhere. Oh, uh, coffee. Oh, oh, my doctor's office. Coffee. Uh, <laughs> uh, One knuckle or two. Is that, that the usual? Pretty much. I'm a, <laughs> that's, that's how it rolls. And okay. Just, but that's not even the point of this story. What's sadly, the point? Because this story Sadly, sucks. sadly, you suck. Sadly... The same lady that said the usual, that brightened my day, I was on cloud nine. I felt like I just walked into cheers and I was high-fiving everybody. She then proceeds to put a tomatoes on my sandwich that are very green. Very green. Or were they fried? No. But there were plenty of other tomatoes in there that were not near as green. And I had to say, uh, I mean, nobody wants a, a hard green tomato in there. I said, uh, can, can you switch that out with another more red tomato? Oh, sure. And also, while you're making my sandwich and putting the jalapeno on there, don't give me, they just dig their hand into that thing of jalapenos and they drop them onto my sandwich. Don't give me the jalapenos with the stems on it. I don't want dim stems. Take them out of there. That's like asking me if I want the heel of a, heel part of a loaf of bread. I eat the heels. I hate the hill. And most people do, but you're a weirdo. I understand I am that. I am king of the hill. I am but, king of the hill. I but like I don't, the hill. You are the a hill. hill. Well, no, all the other pieces of bread, you don't know if they're upside down or right side up. Like they're, 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 what? yeah, like, no, you don't they're know. clearly shaped so. No, they're not. Yes, they are. No, they're not. When you made a loaf of bread, they go slightly outwards towards the top and then they have a little indentation and a little poof at the ends, like a house. They're no, like a they little don't. house. No, they don't. It's like no. a silhouette of a house. No, the heel, you know what side goes which i like well-defined oh you're not talking yes. about vertically you're talking about like if the bread's laying down you don't know which side yes. is up yes yes you said uh, okay well I said, that i understand no. I, and, and yes that, that's that's what's important and people are always knocking the hill well the people just do that nobody what's the last time because it's ate? all crust nobody the, likes the crust of toast uh, when's, bread when's the last time you've ate a hill Give it a shot. I, 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 I don't remember because I don't like them. Why no, would I eat don't, it? When you I, don't know. You just think I do you know. Don't. I have you had don't. a heel. I when? have had a heel. When? I, it's been years. I know what a heel is. Give it a shot. You might try it. I'm dying on this heel. You have to. You're heel curious. You, <laughs> might, you might enjoy the heel. I'm taking it to Capitol Hill. Beverly Hills. Let's, uh, let's, let's, uh, what else was I going to talk about? Are you done with this subway story? I'm done with the subway. Don't give me, don't give me no green tomatoes. There's plenty of red fresh ones in there. And don't give me them stems. I don't want them stems. What I would do if I worked at subway, when any random person would come in, I would just look at them and say the usual. And then they would be (laughs) all happy. And then I would, I would. I would proceed to make the crappiest sandwich, just like get pita tuna. bread, <laughs> tuna. pita bread, lay some tuna and meatballs on it, put some mustard and mayonnaise together, and like this weird sandwich, and wrap it up, and just hope that they don't say anything because tuna they're with, there's, they're so excited they don't care what you make them. I have done that. I've jala- done that. Like she forgot my cheese one time. I'm like, that's okay. She thinks this is the usual. Jalapenos and. Tuna and I'll put that in and wrap it up. Charge them like nine nine dollars. <laughs> mustard. You just like pile. Mu- you like extra mustard, right? 
Do you want your regular chips and just dig around and get the, you know. <laughs> sun chips. Nobody likes sun chips. I eat the sun chips. Oh, my God. I enjoy the sun chips. It's and obvious- mustard. I only need a strip of mustard. That's plenty. Mustard goes a long way. This is true. Uh, you you were gonna you had a topic sort of kind of for for uh, a semi topic before I, we no, get into I, emails I disagree. or whatever. I think this is a full topic. This is oh, not okay. a half topic. Okay. You you well, mentioned this topic. Uh, uh, this very show, <laughs> what we have just done is the crux of this topic. So I was uh, I'm on Twitter. I try to keep our Twitter presence there, even though nobody knows who we are, and Jerry doesn't I, mess with anything. I got banned. I can't be on there. So I go on Twitter every now and then, and I, I don't follow this person, but I guess someone I do had liked it or retweeted it or something. And this person basically, not basically, I'm looking at it right now so that I don't get it wrong and I don't uh, uh, paraphrase too much, that something incorrectly. They said, uh, board gaming podcast leading with two guys umming and airing through inside jokes and what I did today, small talk for 15 plus minutes before mentioning a board game. OMG, how do y'all listen to these? And then go on down a little bit further, and they talk about how they would benefit from getting to the point, reading this uh, storytelling, uh, some sort of like how how to do storytelling type thing. Then it says, I'm amazed they fill the first 15 minutes with non-podcast tropes and zero board game content like it was a bit or a dare. They didn't even riff about their favorite whiskey or craft beer. Always good for four to six minutes. Anytime there's two guys talking. I have three reactions to this. I want to hear all three. The first one was, that's us. How dare you? That's us. I'm I'm looking for this person on Twitter as we speak. I'm after him. <laughs> uh, so, yes, we banter. And... So I'm like, oh, I'm like, kind of like, ouch, that's us. But then I start thinking, well, not really, because we started off a certain way. We've morphed. We had an idea when we started. The idea when we started was, yes, that is most board gaming podcasts, especially. There's always the banter segment. I mean, we even made it a joke, a thing. The banter segment. Engage. Because that's what literally every board game podcast does. But for our show, generally, we're all banter segment. And then we talk about a game at the very end or a topic or whatever the crap we want to. So I'm like, no, we're different. We're different. But are we? I don't know. I think the main thing might be listening to someone that is either uninformed or we. D- I do take out any ums and errors and long pauses and... I edit. I I put forth the er effort to edit the um and long pauses. Yes, that kills me too. So my first my first reaction was, "How dare they?" That's us. My second reaction was, "Wait, I agree. (laughs) I agree with this person because that's how we we started our podcast. Because every freaking board game podcast was the same banter." What did you play today? And then either a main big game or a main topic. That is every single board game podcast out there. And we have kind of morphed into what we are, where we just talk about any and everything. And then we talk a little bit about board games at the end or interspersed throughout, whatever we want to do. We don't really have a formula, which could be a pro or a con. Our formula is success. (laughs) But we have found a very small measure of success in what we do because the people that listen to us, we get often time told we listen to you for the banter, not the board games. Because, uh, in fact, uh, on Sporadically Bored Facebook, I just saw a post where one of the listeners was like, I want more podcasts like Sporadically Bored and Snobs. Not something that's just like board game, board game, board game, board game, board game. And I'm the same way. And we've had this discussion before about when you first get into board games, you're kind of like just, you know, bam, the dice tower, bam, you know, all these other ones that are just like board game, board game, board game, board game. But once you've kind of gotten into it and then you're kind of like, well, 
I've kind of got all the board games I ever really need. Sure, I'm still looking, but I, then I kind of want the other stuff, the alternate talk. Then my third reaction. So first, that's us. How dare and you, you have multiple reactions. I did. I did. I don't, I don't think then you I, can. I can't. Shut You're, up and you listen. Have a, you Shut have up and a listen. reaction. No, I had three reactions. First, it was, ouch. Then it was, well, I kind of agree. Then the third one was, however, people can do whatever the crap they want to do. If these guys want to suck and be boring, let them. They're, you don't have to listen. If this, if whatever podcast they were subtweeting about is having a good time, they're enjoying themselves, let them do what they want to do. Why, why is there some sort of podcast police? They're, they're not professionals. They're not getting any money. They're literally, this is a hobby. It's something for fun for the vast majority of, especially board game podcasts out there. So those were my three reactions. First, I was like, ouch. Then I was like, I agree. But then thirdly, I was like, you know what? Let, let, let these two guys talking have their fun. That's what I had to say. Well, all your reactions are wrong. I don't know how you <laughs> had three reactions and none of them were the correct one. Uh, so, f- first off, like anything on Twitter and people talking on Twitter, they should not be able to, to do anything to you. They can't hurt you. So the no, idea that this person is hitting the nail on the head regarding our co- our podcast, I don't care. Secondly, as for agreeing with her, uh, I believe that, yes, there are formats that are very popular on podcasts. And yes, I will I will say that I am very bored with that particular format. Like, I do not enjoy the, oh, hey, what'd you do this week type thing, and back and forth and back and forth, and what game did you play? There, there, there is a lot of banter that's not high quality. No, it's, it's, it's not it's green not tomato. So, it's not green tomato banter. No, it's not because people people don't lead the interesting life that you do. You're on the road. <laughs> you're eating at all the subways. They every know you subway by name. That a, like every all the <laughs> every subway that a every subway an within a fifty wheeler. mile radius. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every subway within a fifty mile radius just knows you. It's that that's that's Gobby. That's the guy. That's him. That's the that's the the night rider of the subway. Um, and also, also, I have, I have deep thoughts regarding your last reaction, which is not really a reaction because you've had time to think about it. Uh, having people just make a podcast for fun. We know a lot of people that do that. Like there's a lot of podcasts out there that people will just, they're, they're not very good. They're not very good. <laughs> no, they're not they're, good. They're just not. Don't they and, barely and have? I'm, I'm not. Some put, people don't even have microphones. No, they just they talk one. into the air, the computer, and they they yeah they talk yeah they just talk into the air and they hope that Microsoft is good enough to be listening and record what they're saying. <laughs> that's basically all that they do. The, the, their that's voice e- that's, their voice echoes around their large empty room they're recording in. <laughs> What I'm yes. trying to say is is that a lot of the podcasts, uh, uh, they suck, as do most of the, the YouTube channels. There's just a lot of people out there that shouldn't. I know people want to put their voice out there, and they think that what they have to say is new and different and valuable, but they should leave it to the professionals. That's us. But we're not professionals. professionals. We're amateurs. We're almost and, professional no, level comedians. We're almost. We're we're almost professional. So that's that's my thing. So if people are having problems with producing quality content, my advice is just uh to quit. To stop to stop what you're doing. Go go find something that you're better at. Have you tried quilting or or perhaps spinning a good yarn itself? with yarning. Spark part pot part time at subway something i don't know i i do agree that the format of the it banter is a is sandwich artist so if you have artistic skills become a sandwich artist like don't you can't talk about my craft i'm an artist 
What if somebody said that to you in some way? That's too much mustard. I'm an artist. How dare you? Class of Thursday. Uh, um, I keep doing um now that you mentioned that. The, I now, know. That something I'm that editing like. them all so out. I, I, Don't worry. No, I want to keep my ums. Why do you? Why do you try to censor me? Well, I think of our good friends. When I think of mediocre podcast, I think oh of the God. Gateway <laughs> Network. <laughs> and the Gateway Network has some premier amateur mediocre podcast. I think of Super Board Sunday. Now those guys, their podcast is it they do they have that format. It's set with two guys, it's four guys or three and a half, I don't know. Three and a half. I don't know who's all on there anymore. I hardly listen. But their podcast, they do that for fun. I it's do so guys, that they could, don't worry. They stay on. There's Brian, there's, Christian, Frankie, Jim. Jim. Jim's the only one on there whose opinion is even remotely, <laughs> remotely refined. I'm not sure. Uh, Frankie, I don't know. I don't, don't get me. We need to have Frankie on. I have questions for Frankie. Okay. I have deep questions for Frankie. Get him on the show. But their podcast is just for fun. And I'm sure they enjoy it. And they have listeners and people who enjoy listening to that show. And that's fine. I think, as you said, people should be able to put out what they want and people can listen to what they want. Well, That's now you're fine. being, but, but now you're being, uh, uh contradictory. Well, you no, just said I, people should be able to put out what they want, but then a the second ago, you said people should find a different hobby. They should. I'm in, well, here, people are free to do what they want, but I'm actively encouraging 90% <laughs> of them to stop. Like you can do like, I look, when you see people wearing like corduroy, you think to yourself, they can do that. Easy if, now. Easy. But at the same time, you kind of go, you know. My maybe, chaps are made of corduroy. Maybe. My buttless chaps are made of corduroy. Well, that, that's And whenever you, hear, whenever you hear, zzz, 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 you better look out. Here comes Guppy. That's, that's why people should encourage their, their friends to stop doing things that are actively holding them back. And some people just don't get it. And so there's nothing wrong, nothing wrong with having your own podcast, YouTube channel, doing your own media. But sometimes you just got to say, hey, have you tried something else? This is why The Voice and American Idol, there's those people who get on stage and they think they can sing and they can't. My friends I, told me I can sing. I hold their friends responsible for that. Yes. I would not let, if Enrique came to me and said, I'm going to go on America's Got Talent. I would say, Enrique, what, what talent do you have? What talent do you think y y you possess? And He's a cat whatever, whisperer. Whatever he does, his, 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 his ventriloquism, uh, whatever it is that he is trying to go on stage, if it was truly awful, I would tell him and do my best to make sure he understands this is probably, you're going to get skewered on national television. Please and don't I do it. I felt that way about lots of podcasts. I, I've when I got into board game, I was like, I was just powering through all sorts of board game podcasts, and like you said, ninety percent, if not more, are just terribly boring. And that I, I, I guess in saying that, I'm saying I don't think ours is boring. Clearly you, not. Or else well, we wouldn't be doing it. Well, no, it's because you should not feel bad. That you're better than everyone else. <laughs> I don't. I don't feel bad that through our hard work and dedication, we have elevated our mediocre podcast to greatness. We've and grown we it are, organically. We are influential in the sphere of board gaming media. I have no... Paula Dibbing was on our show. I know, right? You're welcome. I, I struggled mightily. Persistently. To get her on here. But this is my thing. I looked up what is the average downloads, like the average downloads for podcasting. And I believe it was like somewhere, like if you're in the hundred, like if you're not hundreds, like at a hundred plus, like a hundred or 200 is probably like, I think the average. And they're like anything above that, you're doing really good. So that tells you how many podcasts are out there that are struggling at, 30 downloads, 40 downloads, 50, anything below 100. And I feel for those people because we used to be them until we yeah. decided not to be and become great. 
<laughs> and that's just, just one day decided. You know what? Well, no, we, we you, you, look. Greatness doesn't just happen overnight. It's something iron sharpens iron, and in this case, sharp wit sharpens dull. Here we go. Mundane. Here comes banter. the insult. This, Appreciate no, that. No, I'm saying this is what happened to us. We took what we had. Did we sharpen we, each other, or was it yet, just you sharpening me? Uh, there is the blade, and then there's the whetstone. <laughs> That's how, and you, the, the the blade can't. The blade will get dull unless it's rubbing up against the stone, the very large bulbous <laughs> stone. Bulbous stone. This is. I was saying this. Uh, you that. are my rock. <laughs> how dare you? You are the rock for which the foundation of this podcast is built on. I am. Yes, that's that's what I'm trying to. That's the euphemism I'm going to use. Okay. When uh, I saw the post and spread a few board about list, uh, list some other podcasts, I, I told him smart list. Do these three rich millionaire actors need listeners? No, they don't need them, but they are good. It's Jason Bateman, Sean Levy, and uh, Will Arnett. They're freaking hilarious, and they're they have a back and forth banter. And Will Arnett just they just insult each other constantly. And surprising, I always find it surprising. When you have on comedians as a guest on the show, and like almost all the comedians suck on podcasts, they're like boring. Uh, they head on. They head on Aquafina, who I like her shows, her love movies. Love the water, love the water. <laughs> but she was just like super, just I guess normal. Like she was just answering their questions, yes or no. Like wasn't given anything, but but just the banter between them is what makes it funny. Because they'll just start insulting each other, but I was, I was listening to it. And I was like, now those guys know how to podcast, and they're very. And of course, they have you know, they've got production out the wazoo. They're millionaires. I really, I, I done forgot where I was going with you, this. Your, your point is, is that their their format is nothing special because you, right, you, you, you they suggest- they literally just come on. They insult each other. Then they have a guest come on, and the guest may or may not tell a stories or two. They had Tom Hanks as the newest one. Very good. Enjoyed that one. Ryan Reynolds was funny. I like the Ryan Reynolds one. They've got like 68 episodes. They just started last year in the pandemic. But they're good. They, they're they good at what they do. They're entertaining, even though the show may not be that great that episode. But just listening to them, those are guys that know how to podcast. Well, they do, and they do a fine job. And I, I mean, I don't listen to a lot of podcasts other than our own, but I have listened to several episodes of Smartless, and I enjoy it thoroughly. Uh, I hope that one day to be famous enough to be asked on because I love Will Arnett and he's the guy. Freaking hilarious! And, and Jason Bateman is just so like he's exactly like his characters. It's in cra- It's crazy. He's just like this. Like subtle snark, and I know snark. Lots of people, I don't, snark is a term that is used widely and generally, but I like snark, what and it's the, not. I'm looking up the definition of snark. It's just kind of. I would consider you snarky. Snark, an imaginary animal. <laughs> you have the spirit of this imaginary animal that is oftentimes, uh, like it, it, it cuts, it insults. It always just has something. I would. It's probably like the modern day sassy snark. Like, is you have to look sin- up at the Urban Dictionary, probably. No, no, no. I found it. It it, oh, it okay. is a it is an attitude or expression of mocking irreverence and sarcasm. The synonyms go. for this is also crotchety, okay, or yeah. snappish. That's you. I'm crotchety. You are indeed crotchety. Given to croak. Oh. Giving to crotchets. Crotchet. I guess that's a thing. Crochet. To, no, no, it's not crochet. That's spelled differently. Given oh. to subject to whims, crankiness, or ill-tempered. I am crotchety and snarky. You, you're a snark. You are Tony Snark. I am the Jason Bateman of board game podcasting. <laughs> you are. And even Sean, like, I, I, I don't know a lot of his stuff, but... He throws some zingers in there, and it's good. It's I just like that show. Anyway, enough about Smartless. They I, have millions of listeners. I can't believe us. that you got set off by somebody on Twitter. I do understand her point, though. No, Garrett. no, I didn't. I didn't get set off. It made triggered. me. It made. 
I didn't get triggered. I want you to know that your feelings <laughs> are validated. <laughs> My feelings. I'm hearing you. I'm listening to you. It's not that, I, but it made me think. A, like I said, I just, oh, I've already said, but it just made me think, is that us? But yet, is there anything wrong with that? And uh, just let the guys do what they want to do. I two found guys? it. I'm responding back to the Twitter. No, please As don't. two men who have a podcast. Please don't. Where we just banter about please don't. whiskey and other malted beverages. Please don't respond. Please do not make fun of our lived experiences. <laughs> please don't respond. I really I think appreciate that, if you, you don't respond. Well, no, I, what, this, it's oh. Twitter. It's Twitter. If it's so invalid, then why bother responding? You make a fine point. But I <laughs> thank you. Uh, and then, like a previous tweet of theirs was also like really uh, tearing down the dice tower. So they have strong opinions, and I, I, I like a lot of the things they say. And I don't even follow this person. Maybe I should follow them. A lot of their opinions are valid. It's like they say this, they, and it's very like kind of, uh, what's the term? Controversial. Like, bam, bam, take that. And I'm not that guy. Like, I don't, I'm not a controversy guy. I'm all about controversy. I know you are. And that's why I edit the podcast. Because I, I take out, I take out all the stuff that is controversial. I cannot believe that you've removed from the Disagreeable Nerd podcast regarding Dune. You removed my rant where we rated. Who would you rather, Tom Holland or Timothy Shyamalot? I cannot I have believe my reasons. You a, deleted that. Upon re-listening, it wasn't that great. It wasn't that funny. And B, it had nothing to do with the Dune podcast. So I took it out. I think that you're pro Tom Holland. <laughs> is what I think it is. Because we all well. we come to the conclusion. That it was indeed well. Now even Paige is flip flop. She's went to Tom Holland. I don't know what the deal is. Tom Holland is not that hot. No, but I do think he has more charisma than Timothy Chalamet. No. Also, you kept saying Shamalot. Shamalot. <laughs> Looks it's not. It's not Camelot. It's Chalamet. Chal- no, he's he's a, yeah, he's Canadian. So they Timothy say it differently. Timothy Chalamet. Shalmot. <laughs> shallots, no. shallots, Timothy shallots, shallots. Gallic and shallots. They're like small potatoes. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. We got a no, solid what? thirty no. minutes. No, no, wait, 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 no, no, wait, hold, stop, stop, stop. We got a solid thirty minutes. I've got to put this out there tonight. We're Can recording this one Wednesday. Email? One email. I was going to save it for maybe Look, the next I, episode. I know, but let me read one okay. email. Okay, that's all okay. I want. Can I okay. have it? Okay. 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 I'm going to read. Uh, let me read here. Bra- Brandon Haynes. Like the. Un- no, wait. His is. No. His like, is, no, I was about to say. His is a whole his, podcast. His, no, his is a whole podcast. Let me see here. Let me find. Tyler. Tyler who lost Ty- his games good. in a. Tyler. What is wrong with you? He's got a big. Hang on. Let me find a small one. Let me find a small email. No, that one's that one's big, too. What's with these people and their big, their big? Uh, That's why I said oh, we can. Brenton <sighs> Valad. Okay. He says, "Good afternoon, Gobby. I would include Jerry in that, but what you said, he doesn't read the email. Well, show, yeah, Brenton. I'm reading it now. I heard you say a few episodes ago you needed some interesting guests on your show to send our CV." Uh, I have now had a few Roku gins in me, and what the heck? My name is Brenton. Brenton, like Brenton. Roku, like the streaming device. I don't know. He may. Did he drink so much <laughs> that he, he consumed? Was, <laughs> he ate a Roku streaming stick. He can now. He can now stream Hulu. <laughs> you uh, press in his belly button. Netflix comes on. <laughs> let's see. He's now in his late forties. I have a wide spectrum of board game experience. While I am sure it is obvious by now that I am not an English teacher, I believe myself to be a good cook, a lover of vast array of movies and music and wealth of useless information, dad jokes, and other things. These things should mean a pretty interesting banter. As for game topics, I can wax poetic about modern to recent releases, 
uh, modern classics. I currently have written a few unpublished blogs on the topic of keeping similar games in your collection and intend to write more <laughs> sure, about big sure games. That's fascinating. Wait a minute. It is fascinating. <laughs> Unpublished blogs. You don't know. Brenton might be. I, I have no. Let's see. I have no intention intention of posting them anywhere. Sometimes I just like to get things. So out he of wrote my a head. diary. That's a yes. diary. <laughs> he says you're, I can. You're journaling, Brenton. You're I'm, journaling. It's not an unpublished blog. We have not responded to this. And this came in September. He sent this September the 9th and nobody responded. My God. You never respond. I get well, tired I'm, of I responding. Am res- I am <sighs> responding as we speak. He You've says, been I've helping been- too many old people die peacefully. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. No, I wanted to end it five minutes ago. And now you dear, kept it going. Dear Brenton. Oh of course, we would love to have you on our show. I was kind of like over. I'm. I, I kind of want to like. I like this. Back to basics, baby. Me and you. I think that's what the people like. Uh, they might like Brenton. We need to give. Uh, uh, why is well, that? he has. He's self-proclaimed to be somewhat interesting. That's a. That's a high bar to set for yourself. Well, here's wax the deal. poetic. What does wax mean? Uh, when you wax on and wax off, I do that every Thursday. Uh, it is a. Uh, it's like when you go on and on. Wax. What day? But why poetic? Does that mean you think your words are poetic? I have oh. responded to Brenton. He might be a genius. He might be. Your he new might best be. Friend. I mean, the people we've had on have been amazing. Here we go. Uh, Wax Poetic. Yeah. Wax Poetic is a New York-based trip-hop band. The band came together in 1997, founded by Turkish musician Ilhan Ursehan. Hmm. Wax Poetic is apparently a band. That's Nicholas, a good name for a band. That is an Nic- excellent name for a band. You're always saying that's a good band name. Wax Poetic. Th- Nicholas, that's, that's amazing. Nicholas Hanatuk? I don't know how to say his name. Yeah, Let's you're see. going way back. Like we haven't had a we haven't podcasted together in two months. He says two he loves that months. hello there audio clip of Enrique. I would play it now, but I'm recording differently, so I cannot. And Conrad Ratcherford. We oh, need Conrad. to have Conrad Ratcherford on. He's the computer scientist. See, we got all these people we need to have on. Other men that we can banter back and forth with. <laughs> Other men continue. that we can feel fifteen minutes worth of banter with. And then talk about games. Do you like whiskey? Are you a boring male? Please come on our podcast. (laughs) You know what I've just discovered? We have have not talked about a board game this podcast, so let's not. Uh, I thought about rebranding ourselves. Why don't we call ourselves the bantering snobs? No, no, because here's the thing. Here's the thing. We don't want a certain class of people, and I have found that people who play board games tend to be of that class of people they understand doctors professors all the folks that we've had on our show correct and if we like just go banter then we're going to start letting the dregs of society in <laughs> people who just listen to podcasts to listen to podcasts you know we don't want that we want to keep okay. this on the dl okay. as they say we'll just okay. we'll say board games and that like that makes us a board game podcast even though we're not really the squid game snobs the Squid Game. <laughs> we could have like, what is the game that you would like to see on the next season of Squid Game? You know, one of my favorite games as a child was War. Russian Roulette. No, War. What is it good for? You split the d- <laughs> absolutely <laughs> nothing. Uh, you split the deck, and my card, my high card, beats your card. I always love that game. Don't know are, why. You go, are you going somewhere with that? You said a minute ago, who's contradicting themselves now? You're like, let's not talk about a board <laughs> game. And then you're like, you know what I like? War. It's fun. All right. Well, I tried to end the show now nine minutes ago, and you didn't let me. So let's end I it. I had more banter. Can you record another? Or, or, I can or, record another. Okay. Let's well, then two let's, this. let's Dude, make this. Part one. <laughs> yes. I am Timothy Shamalot. Until I next time. Been- Jizzerack of the podcast. We such Jizzerack. Don't know. Jizzerack. I'm Gobby. He has jazz hands. And he's really into soft soft, jazz. As long as it's not jizz hands.
Okay. Really likes Crap. it. Crap. All right. Are we going? Bye. This is me. Goodbye. What a uh, that's a professional ending right there. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Board Game Snobs. Stay classy.